Prepareforchange.net is owned and managed by a worldwide community of volunteer lightwives who come together to guide humanity through its planetary transition, the event. Prepareforchange.net sets the example by working for the greater good and was created at the request of the resistance movement. If you are moved to help us help the world, why not join us today? Prepare for Change brings truth so that we may change our ways into the path of grace instead of the path of slavery and destruction. Once we know, we can prepare ourselves for change and remember how to allow God's co-creative mind to assist us in making the best choices for all. Else, we will simply suffer the consequences of our inaction or unbalanced action, which is the result of ignorance. Confronting hard troops and being in service to others is the path we all benefit from. Our planet gives to us every single moment. Now it's time to give back to her. Come visit Prepare for Change to discover much, much more than you've been taught by the corrupt establishment hell-bent on preying on your ignorance. Together, we can be the change we want to see in the world. Hey, good afternoon. We are Prepare for Change with Portal to Ascension. This is Neil Gore, and pleasure to be speaking to you. I hope I got that right. Yeah, you did actually perfectly. Not okay. Every, not everybody does it. Like All that. right, because I think I've heard. I think I've heard it out of uh, oh, there you go. your mouth, probably. So <laughs> I appreciate that because I have heard other people say it differently. So, yeah. Neil Gore, um, congratulations, man. This has been an Thank awesome, you. awesome, awesome conference, and congratulations, kudos, kind of to us. Thank you for get, letting us have kind of take over a little space here. Uh, we've been having some really long conversations. I think it'd be great to put those together as a series and release it on Portal to Ascension channel, release it on Prepare for Change sort of channel. It's completely instructional, this mm -hmm. whole thing. You're the mastermind behind it. You put together this conference of Ascension. What was your thought behind it? Why, we, why do we have to do this? Well, the reason why we, why we have to do this live conference is another um, is another aspect compared to why we have to do the events in general, right? That's like the the events in general, obviously, is that we're seeing a lot of challenges and suffering in the world that we have the ability to actually resolve right now. Where it comes to right. um, people that need shelter that can't have it, that are suffering from not having it, people who are hungry, the fact that the monetary system uh, and money in the U.S. we don't own it, oh. and the Federal Reserve does it, so we're continuously getting in debt. To the fact that like a lot of people are in this world of overstimuli and they feel a lack of self-worth and a lack of self-love and are almost like uh, animals with amnesia not knowing who we are or where we come from you know sure, like sure. the lack of our cosmic culture so yeah. that is just in a nutshell of why i'm doing these events and go deep into every aspect of that but then why i did this live event is because when we started doing live events like in 2008 we did small ones in 2012 we did two big ones like this cosmic reunion 2012 in 2013 cosmic reunion fourth density and the energy of everybody getting together to celebrate the unity totally different from all over thing. the world yeah, is absolutely. so different. Yeah. So this event is um, not only is our giving back from all the other events that sustain our organization. So it's like our labor of love, like, hey, we're going to do this, get together and celebrate life. But also the speakers here are, are celebrated, too. They're really taken care of and they want to be a part of it. And it's almost like the end of the year kind of event where people have been working hardcore all year and then they oh, get to go, go to yeah, Portal's Ascension Retreat and the speakers get healing themselves. You yeah, know, they yeah. get this, like we hook up massage, all this stuff. So this event is to thank all the people that we work with. Oh, we work cool. with all these speakers yeah. all the time. So it was thanking them for the contribution, giving them something back and then also making it a place where all the people worldwide who are already on our platform or not yeah. can come and join us. Like this 25% of the people here are from other states, you know, or uh, outside yeah. of the U.S. It's pretty amazing. It's interesting to hear your take on that because it is sort of a reward. One thing that a wise uh, friend had mine, of mine had uh, taught me years ago was, Jerry, celebrate your, uh, your victories, big or small, and really, really celebrate the sort of small ones because if you're not doing it, then who's going to do it? And mm. in the whole path of your life, you're going to have a lot of little things that are very significant and you may not like give it the right honor and praise and tribute at the time. So it was interesting because throughout the whole day, uh, especially yesterday, we had um, at least the interviews that we did yesterday were a little bit more of the buttoned up folks. We had Ray Hernandez, we had uh, Desiree and JJ Hertek, we had Billy Carson and um, who was the uh, John D'Souza yesterday. All those guys were sharp dressed. I had my, my coat on yesterday. But the two of those are very act academically minded. 
all of them basically have a Juris Doctor. Uh, they've worked at the FBI. They have been to MIT. Each one of those guys. Her tech's so, worked so. with, uh, well, JJ worked with Alan Hynek, you know. So, okay. yeah, they've definitely been working so, with academics. It was interesting because they're definitely studied. They're academic. They're yeah. research-minded. They, if you don't come kind of ready for them, what I thought was interesting about the whole conference is it bridges metaphysical with the quantum physics yeah. and with sort of the accepted physics that are out there. Yes. And it, respect to you for asking those guys to come here. What I was getting at is it's a reward for them. Yeah. Because the years, years and years, decades, right, in some cases, that they've been working in the fringe, they were finally able to be kind of come home to their calling to their crowd, to their soul group, mm -hmm. and get some love. And it's great to see them getting respect. And it, it was pretty neat. So mm -hmm. that's part of it. Talk, talk about like what the idea was about bringing the bricks and mortars, those researcher guys, yeah. in with the more metaphysical guys. Yeah, and I'll start by um, talking about what you said about metaphysics and quantum physics connected together. Because something that I like to um, really say is that metaphysics, to me, is metaphorical quantum physics. Because in quantum physics, you have, for example, the singularity. In metaphysics, you have oneness. It's the exact same thing, just a metaphoric way of explaining yeah, it. Right, exactly. And then in um, quantum physics, you have electromagnetic field. In metaphysics, you have aura. It's there the exact go. same thing. And then they both have dimensions, you know what I mean? I did actually an infographic on my website with all the metaphysics terms and quantum physics terms and how they interrelate. Right? That's pretty awesome. So we'll throw that no, the, that uh, URL underneath here about yeah. where we can get that download or anything. But that's interesting. You should be appointed to like sort of <laughs> yeah. a board member or something because bringing those two things together, obviously that's what yeah. led you here. And they do study sort of the same things, right. but they're starting to come together and realize that it is oneness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and quantum physics is actually, because you know science and religion is separate, but it's let's just say science and spirituality because religion has the connotation of organized religion, right? So science has gone down one path and um, a lot of atheism has come from it, and then um, or, um, spirituality has gone down another path. Right, right. But all of a sudden quantum physics came that completely destroys Newtonian physics because Newtonian and quantum physics um, both cannot coexist. It doesn't make sense that they coexist. So what we've realized is we've realized the illusion. We've realized how this is a simulated reality. So the, the quantum physics element is bridging spirituality and science, right? And it, then we find out that quantum physics is actually ancient wisdom that they were talking about right, ages exactly, ago. Exactly. Buddha said that we're made of um, trillions of subatomic particles called kalapas. That's what he called it. And right. he said that these um, vibrations are passing and going, passing and going all the time. And that when you can tune into the subtle frequency and the subtle energy of these kalapas, you can transcend yourself. And it's almost like using your own body as a stargate, right? So this information has been there for a long, long time. And now quantum physics is truly bringing it back. So to your question about why I brought all these people here, it's quantum physics, firstly, I came from a linear scientific background, oh, okay. which is yeah. why is how I found spirituality. I needed to be um, things to be proven to me. Mm -hmm. When I found out that we're all vibration and frequency, and that what I perceive you as is not really what you are, and that I only can perceive a certain frequency range, uh -huh, my right. curiosity went to what is outside those frequency ranges. And by searching for what is outside those frequency ranges, all the stuff that we're having here came sure. about. And that's why we have everybody from different walks of life, different topics that are all here for the collective. They've all come from different, um, like from the academics to the spiritual. Specific di right. disciplines, yeah, they've sure. They've all found the Pursuits. same kind of answers, but translated from a That's different That's pretty wild, isn't it? Yeah, right. right. Yeah, sure. And ascension is not, and I said this earlier today, so cool. that as, as, ascension isn't one aspect of what's happening on the planet in regards to all the topics that you cover, we cover, right? Yeah. Ascension is the topic and all those other topics are within it. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, like yeah. UFOs from the nuts and bolts to uh, why your food isn't good, like good for you to, sure, exactly. um, to like your own identity and your own spiritual development. It's all really like an ascension where every single day we're ascending and evolving and growing. And then there's a collective ascension where if we can get to a certain level, we are able to collectively shift and create a new reality. Right. 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 So that's why I have people from every aspect, because all those topics are relatable to Ascension and ha giving what we are about is giving people a full circle awareness of everything that is happening. So any topic that we can think about that relates to this, we'd like to bring it here. That's wonderfully said. And 
in that it seems like you're stating your purpose basically your mission was that yeah. sort of like when you meditated on it thought about it asked source higher self about it is kind of that the answer that you got neil you've got to uh bring people to understand this ascension process it seems like we talked about that compression zone that everything's coming together sort of right now mm -hmm. and the portal to ascension conference this whole weekend it sort of brought these seemingly disparate energies or previously disparate type of energies and disciplines and pursuits together yeah. into a oneness so it's kind of like a macrocosm of the micro the micro that's out there mm -hmm. which is interesting because the the presentation that rob at least the interview that we were talking about talked about scale and you talk about what we do perceive uh, as i understand it we perceive the visible visible light spectrums like four percent so in the wholeness and the one of every oneness of everything we're missing out in this experience as humans that 96 percent yeah. give, give or take whatever 90 percent. even yeah. if you're missing that much you're missing a lot i also like to throw out that i think we as people are biological things and we're not really all that much different than the field of flowers yeah. flowers are going to open up at their own rate we're going to open up at our own rate there are going to be leaders out there that open up to show the rest of the field how to do it hey yeah. follow us when you look at sort of a long scale cosmos of the experience we're just at that point where we're at that change of time where people are opening up so yeah. it's pretty amazing mm -hmm. That's true. And to answer your question about what, what you said, actually, about the our mission statement, right? right? Yeah, actually, when I did come about doing this, I would say, like, 2008 to 2011, like, I would say the intro of our events is, like, you know, I'm not here just to preach to the choir. I'm here to uh, teach the linear-minded people about so. how this is a reality, which is why I came in through quantum physics and science and my two favorite topics. And, you know, even uh, let me say this first, quantum physics... Um, is, is just the term that was given, but I believe there is a specific agenda behind it on the mainstream that isn't really in alignment with what the truth is. Okay. But for lack of a better explanation, the quantum realm that quantum physics attempts to explore, right? right? So I, I use quantum physics and I use ancient history to talk to any layman or any normal person that there doesn't know this stuff right. about this. And then the extraterrestrial component gets added to that later. Because when you really delve into ancient history, for example, and you explain certain things and you show certain truths, well said. they yeah. got to think like, whoa, wait a second. Like, what else does it mean? And then like, sometimes I jokingly <laughs> say, I like might meet some first time, tell them something about ancient history. And then I go, the aliens, you know what I mean? Just that's like, right, yeah. To make everybody laugh. Like, <laughs> I'm actually serious at the same time, right? That's the, that's like the that's like the meme with uh, uh, Giorgio Sukalus. Yeah, I'm not exactly. saying it's aliens, but yeah. it's aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so like, and then the linear aspect is a lot of times we won't go into this realm here and other conferences or topics unless our linear our linear mind is appeased. We need to, so what I do, like for example, sure, my wife and I, we facilitate sound healing experiences, interactive experiences, Tibetan bowls, didgeridoos, like 20 different instruments. But I do a 10 minute talk in the beginning of it about the science behind oh, cool. frequency and how the ancient That's people right. used it. Why do I do that? Because over half the people never experienced this before. And now I just appeased their linear mind, gave them some facts to base it on. And there's no doubt in their mind going into it because our belief system is also quantum physics and has the ability yeah, sure. to stop the vibrations from even touching us. If like, I, I like uh, oversimplifying it, but um, I say like 50% is intention, 50%, no, 50% is the science of the fact that this thing vibrates and it's gonna affect you, sure. right? And the other 50% is your belief system. If, for example, if there's a sound healing bowl that can heal your, your heart from something, but you're like, how can a bowl heal my heart, right? Well, well you're putting out an intention. Right. Your, your intention is, this doesn't work. How yeah. is this thing going to work for me? Yeah. So it's a negative intention. So that's right. going to counter the openness right. to receive it. And that yeah, shows sure. that what, what we just showed in that is not our limitations, but how powerful we are because we're, able, right. to, yeah, we're right. able to exactly. completely stop something. So why don't we think that on the other side of the spectrum, we're able to receive it? Right? Or manis manifest something. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what was the, my wife sort of said something like that all the time. I, God, it's a, it was a beautiful thing and I just lost it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's reality becomes perception and the mind is infinitely powerful. Yeah. You know, we talked, some of the people this weekend were talking about scale and they were talking about uh, the size of the brain. The brain is a galaxy. There's so much stuff that's going into mainstream now 
that from the sciences, from the healing technologies. I see stuff all the time about like cannabis or about uh, your diet affecting food and things like that. There's yeah. infinite amount of past possibilities. So it's interesting that you say the premise is to bring people along because that's actually kind of a higher mission. The higher mission is sort of healing and being Peter uh, the Piper, right? Being the leader yeah. and bringing some people along. And, and the thing that we notice at Prepare for Change, and we say this all the time, because we're kind of an arbiter of news and we'll talk about financial, we'll talk about health, we'll talk about sciences, we'll talk about metaphysical, we'll talk about healing, we'll talk about quantum, so many different things. Whatever right now at this period of time, the thing is that's gonna trigger you or get you active, it's parents with vaccines or it's um, a healing modality or you have a loved one that's being affected by a cancer, you're gonna look for different answers. People are like in mass seeking out answers right now. Mm -hmm. So it's great that you acknowledge that. You can't live in this sort of bubble of, I'm right, uh, I'm gonna just stay on my path and not share this information. It's probably, it's beholden upon us, our organizations, to seed that information, drop the seeds, mm -hmm. and let people kind of come to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and not have the expectation of whether they choose to be in or not. Because, you know, we, like I used to have, for example, with our family members, a lot of people, well, some people within this or even when they start out, they really want their family members to know because they realize how empowering it is and what can assist them. And then when the family members aren't able to accept it, it can be really disheartening. So things like that and your other friends. Um, when you get to a place of like just speaking your truth, but not having the expectation of that person shifting, you create more peace within yourself and you can actually be more of a conduit for truth, right? Because when you are coming from that triggered element of like, I need to tell you the truth, this is it, this is it. Change, oh, yeah, change, sure, change. absolutely. You're, right. you're going to have worse, um, you're going to have much a backlash. Yeah, yeah exactly. Then a situation where you're like, hey, this is what I found out, this is what's going on. All right, see ya, I got to go to work. <laughs> you know yeah, you got you to gotta, you gotta, gotta learn a level of Zen. Right. Uh, but you got to honor everybody, everybody's yeah. sort of perspective opinion right now. But, you know, collectively, it's a, it is a mass consciousness type of a thing. And we're in that era, just where the energies are, yeah. you know, who would have thought that we would have been brought together a few years back. Yeah. And yet here we are right now. So yeah, we're exactly. in the right time and place. So what you're doing is got to be applauded and honored and, it's a, it's pretty amazing stuff. Thank it's tireless you. work. What are your plans sort of in the next year? Yeah, so we will right now we're doing like like around 100 events a year. We do online events. We do um, tours. We have an event next week in Boulder. So oh, I don't cool. attend all of them. Um, I have people in different places all over the world that do events for yep. me. So we have um, a continued regularly scheduled programming, right? Like because we have an <laughs> online university of webinars every single week right cool. we guys did one with jason quit last week glory spent the week before you know so that will always keep going on good um then we have next year we're going to do a tour with emory smith we're going to do a tour with um michael tellinger again we've toured with him for three years in a row and cool. we're going to do a tour with billy carson forbidden tour sweet and so like we're going to do these events in different cities we actually this year my goal was to go to the east coast because we've done a few events in the east coast toronto here and there but we haven't established Expand a portal yourself. to ascension yeah, sure. um presence on the east coast okay now we, we did like eight events on the east coast this year um and we're building our list so next year we're going to do that more right and then in, next year we're also going to be in spain and we're going to live stream the ufo congress there so we're working with them as because uh, we also have conscious live streams.com which right. is the live streaming for conscious organizations only yep right and they hired us to do that and, uh, but the goal with this is to hopefully to keep doing this. It's really a challenge to like sustain this event because of all the costs and everything that goes into just putting it on. Right. So I'm not sure where I'm going to go with this, but I do want to keep doing it. So I figure out the logistics behind it, uh -huh. but we are definitely going to be in different cities doing other events. Like we're going to be in Austin. We're going to do the UFO disclosure and ancient civilization conference there. Very cool. And very cool. we are creating UFOs is called UFOs and Ancient Civilizations. That's the name of the conference. The full name is UFO Disclosure and Ancient Civilizations. Okay. We're going to be in Austin, uh, Asheville, and Boulder within the next two years. Yeah, yeah. The goal within nice. two years is to start um, our Ascension Festival, where we're going to have like a, a weekend-long music festival with conscious presenters. Very cool. Similar to Disclosure Fest, we'll probably work with him because we're good friends. There you go. Right. And then the ultimate goal is to... Um, to bring in enough um, 
income from our activities so that we can buy land and build ascension communities based on advanced technology, uh, free energy devices. So ultimately, we're, very, we're funneling our money. Cool. We're yeah. funneling our money into this. Um, and even as I'm going to take you a little further and say even maybe create landing um, landing docks and contact um, modalities and training camps so that we can start interacting with these beings. You just said it. You've said it before. So it's going to manifest. Exactly. You got to put it out there and you got to have sort of a plan and you got to think about it. And, and make it happen. There's no reason that that can't. And I think that's the empowerment yeah. that some of these early adapters and masters have been talking about for a long time. Other sides kind of know that type of thing. Yeah, That's how they use it. So it's a pretty interesting time for us right now in this period that you're getting that information and you're seeing through that veil and you can realize this is the potential. It's cool that you said what you said because that's basically healing the planet and healing communities or creating the ambassadors to go out there and yeah. do their own sort of healing. Prepare for Change does a bit of that. You know, we take in humanitarian projects and encourage them and vet them and sort of yeah. advise in some respects. We think that the universe is infinitely abundant. Right. So it's just a matter of putting out the intention, like attracts like, bringing that abundance into the projects that you have, that we have. And um, the other thing about the projects and um, all the events that you talk about is you're creating that community and it's bringing all of these people together. So thank you again for doing that. I think Thanks, it's man. very awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, bro. Members of the awakened community prepare for change supporters and humanitarians alike. We desperately need your help and generosity more than ever. As regular listeners know, we proudly founded and finance an orphanage in Malawi, Africa that relies on our community's efforts in their daily struggles. Please help us help them by giving a charitable donation today. Your donations will provide direct assistance to improve the lives of more than 530 orphans, infirm and widows at our orphanage in Malawi. This assistance will change their lives for the better and help sustain them. Through love, care, and education, we strive to aid our orphans out of poverty and into abundance and freedom. We can only achieve these goals with your help. Prepare for Change supports over 530 needy at the orphanage, and their daily needs are dependent on us as an organization. We provide them with financial support on a weekly basis. The vision we have for our adopted orphanage is that we can raise enough funds to eventually cover all aspects of the children's welfare. This assistance includes health care, formal and informal education, food and security, suitable accommodations, and safe transportation. Please hear our calls and the children's calls for help at this crucial moment. It is only with your help that we can reach our goals. We are a 501c3 charity, so your donations are a tax write-off. To donate, please visit our website, prepareforchange.net, where you can do so in a variety of ways. You can find the donate button there or donate via PayPal directly to donations at prepareforchange.net. Your donations truly make a difference. Thank you. We hope you've enjoyed listening to our interview and found it informative. For further information, come and see prepareforchange.net. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.